Hello everyone, um, this is Yanlu from Tsinghua University um, and this is the preview of our lecture on uh, precision low drop power regulators powering SOC. So what does an LDU do? Ideally, we want a very clean DC supply like the straight line, but uh, this will be what we get because the power supplies will suffer from the line transient, the load transient, the input repose, so basically, an LDO needs to provide a very clean supply to reject the input repo and to resist the line and the low uh, transients. So basically, this is the um, LDO topology. We have a voltage reference generates VREF for the air amplifier EA, and then the EA will control the power transistor. Um, basically, it's tuning the on resistance of the transistor and then so in the equivalent circuit, we get a tunable resistor in series with the load resistance. So when the load current change, the source resistance change, then we get a regulated output voltage. So when the output drops, the efficiency will also drop because this is a linear regulator. And then we, when we design a LDO, we need to ask, where should do we design the dominant pole of the feedback loop, right? Basically, there are two, at least two low frequency poles in an LDO. Uh, one generated from the large power transistor. It's on the gate of the power transistor because it has a large capacitance. Another one on the output pole, on, on the output node, because it has a large load capacitance and at light load condition, it has a large resistance as well. So basically the output pole will shift with the loading conditions. And this is the main difference between LDO and amplifiers, right? Amplifier, you drive a fixed load, but for LDOs, the output pole, the output current will change. So when we have a dominant pole at the output uh, case, the, uh, the dominant pole will shift with the loading condition. At high load, we have a high bandwidth, light low, uh, low bandwidth. Sounds good, but it, for the stability consideration, actually at heavy load, we will be suffer from the stability issue because uh, the internal poles will come into the bandwidth. Uh, then we need to have uh, circuit techniques and a better process to push the internal poles to higher frequencies. If we have internal pole dominant case, we generate a relatively low frequency uh, 3, 3 dB uh, bandwidth pole. And then we need a high DC gain to uh, extend the bandwidth. And the stability, the worst case stability will happen at light load condition because at light load condition, we have a large resistance. Uh, the upper pole will shift to low frequency. So for some um, LDOs in this case, we suffer from the limit, we have limitations on minimum output current. So here shows a typical example of LDO regulators. Uh, we can have an uh, impedance attenuation buffer to split uh, low frequency pole into two relatively high frequency poles because the buffer will provide us a small input capacitance and low output resistance. So basically, you, we split low frequency uh, gate pole into two high frequency poles. The first one related to the output, uh, output impedance of the error amplifier and input capacitance of the buffer. The gate pole will be related to the output resistance of the buffer and the gate capacitance. So these two poles will be high frequency and the dominant pole can be set at the output by using a large off-trip capacitor. And then we can consider how to design the buffer. Right? We have listed a couple of uh, analog circuit uh, buffers here. The simplest one is a source follower. We can use a single uh, transistor with a bias current to get to, to have to implement the buffer. Then the output impedance will be one over GM. The output impedance will highly depends on the bias current, so which may cons which will be power consuming. If we want to reduce the output impedance without uh, increasing the current too much, we can use uh, the super source follower which have a local feedback. Uh, it will amplify the output variation through M1 into VA, and then be converted to current through M2. So the output impedance will be one over GM times GMRO. 
So it has been further reduced by GMRO times. Similarly, we have a fleet voltage follower, FVF. It has similar mechanism. The output variation will be amplified by M1 to VA and then be converted to current through M2. So the output impedance is also 1 over GM times GMRO. The difference between SSF and the FVF is the current sink or current source capability. Right here, we use the PMOS as the example. If we use MMOS, we can also change the polarity or the sinking or sourcing current uh, capability. So interestingly, actually, the Philip voltage follower itself can be an LDO. So here shows a simple example. On the left part of the circuit, we have air amplifier, generate reset, which will set the output voltage. So V out will be reset plus VGS. And on the right, we have the FVF topology, which is we call the single transistor controlled LDO. Output voltage variation will be amplified by M8 and then be con used to control the M pass current. We have a, we have a low gain feedback loop. Uh, although the gain is small, but it will be simple and it, be, it can be easily extended to uh, multiple parallel um, LDOs, then it may be good for distributed applications. Another interesting topology is we can insert the super source follower into the fully voltage follower. And then we can have the output pole as the dominant pole for the local loop, for the FVF loop. So basically the buffer split a low frequency pole into two high frequency poles. We can have using better process, more advanced process, to generate a high bandwidth local loop here. And then we set, uh, we will set the DC operation, the DC uh, value of the output. So this is a um, interesting combination of the FVF and SSF topologies. And then in this course, we also will talk about, discuss the uh, PID control uh, analysis for the LDO designs. The reason is that there are so many LDOs out there. Um, we are using this PID control theory and also the small signal, large signal uh, considerations to analyze the existing LDOs. And it will be better for you uh, in the future to invent new LDO topologies. In this uh, equivalent circuit model, we have the plant, which is the power stage, or the other uh, equipment um, that we, are, uh, we want to control. Uh, the plant can have a single pole or multiple poles. The output information will be fed back uh, to the error amplifier compared with the reference information, and then we get the error, inf error information. The error will go through a PID uh, paths. The proportional path will give us uh, the current information because uh, its output is proportional to the current error. And then the integral path will integrate all the past information. So it will give us an accurate output without current error. It depends on the past information. And then the derivative path process the changing rate, the slope of the error. So it can predict the future by uh, based on the rate of change. Okay, so if we combine PID Together, we can have a quite comprehensive uh, control feedback loop. So here in the frequency domain, we get uh, we have the bot plot of this uh, PID controlled uh, plant. The plant, the power stage in the LDO is a single pole plant. For the I control, we have the low frequency uh, uh, pass filter, low pass filter. For P control, we have a wide band high, wide band uh, a wide band path. So the derivative path will be a high pass path. Combine all these four elements, we get um, a multipole system with two zeros. One zero contributed by the P path, another zero contributed by the D path, the derivative path. And for the derivative path, we have to insert a high frequency pole to attenuate the high frequency noise we need to make sure the gain will be below 0 dB at high frequency. We need to have a unit gain bandwidth, right? <clears throat> Otherwise, we will be vulnerable to high frequency noise. 
And let's relate the PID theory to the circuit techniques. If we use, like what we mentioned just now, design the dominant pole at output and use the buffer to split the internal low frequency poles into high frequency poles, we, we don't want low frequency poles in the loop. So this will be a high uh, bandwidth, a high bandwidth loop. It will be fast, but it will have poor accuracy because for the P control, we depends on the error to generate the output current. So we, so, so for certain output currents, we have to use uh, error. So it will have gen, it will result in poor accuracy. That's the fundamental uh, limit for P control. And how about I control? Uh, actually, we have, uh, we can use a capacitor to integrate the pass information, like the well known middle compensation. It will store the pass information on the capacitor. It can uh, give us a dominant pole, and then uh, we can get an accurate uh, feedback loop with low power. But it will be relatively slow, limited by the LILO uh, upper pole, right? Like we mentioned, at LILO, at small currents, we will have uh, low frequency upper pole. And we actually, we can combine the P control and I control, right? So. In the example we discussed just now, uh, on the left side, we have the RMB fire uh, generates the reset voltage. We can add a capacitor here to generate a dominant pole for the, uh, the, the, the red loop. So it will be a slow loop um, like the eye control. And for the local loop, for the blue one, we can set the upper pole as the dominant pole and insert the buffer to drive the power transistor to get the P control loop for fast transient response. So if we combine the, uh, these two loops, we get a PI control uh, for the LDO design. So I think that's all for the preview part. Uh, I hope to see you in the main courses and we will discuss more on the uh, high bandwidth and also high precision LDO designs for the LC SOCs. Okay, thank you.